Okay, so welcome everyone. We'd like to introduce a beautiful man here, Sasha. For anyone who is not familiar with his work, uh, you can go check out his website linked below. There's a lot of fantastic videos. For anyone who's digging into all of the world, the issues that are taking place right now and all of the you know, um, child sacrifice, blood ritual, all of these related things, he has unrolled something very, very beautiful called the International Tribunal for Natural Justice. They have a YouTube channel in which you can find all kinds of fantastic content. So do go check that out. So I bring this man on here today because he is rolling out a message that is very, very deeply in resonance with my heart and my soul, which is that we are so bloody powerful. And the second that we all wake up to that, we do exit this game. We exit this proverbial matrix that is out in our outer reality that is literally just the manifest of our own minds. So when we choose to be sovereign and we choose to live as our soul's essence and to wake up from all of this, as Sasha would refer to it, a dream spell, which is just the mind control that is operating so deeply on planet Earth right now. When we choose to exit the game, we do, and it dissolves. And, you know, this is why I'm so passionate about sharing all of these videos right now, which is very much so focused on your sovereignty, your inner power, and that there really is nothing outside of you that you need. But that is the way society has been set up during these times in which we are constantly reaching for something outside, like an authority or someone to, you know, these, these governments who are going to be taking care of us, as opposed to really trusting our own self, our own heart, our own intuition. So um, I would like to do a proper introduction. Sasha is a former rock and roll musician. And then he started some something very beautiful called Humanitad about 20 or so years ago. And since then has rolled out a very beautiful project in Bali, Indonesia called The New Earth project and um and then as i mentioned the international tribunal for natural justice which i highly recommend you go check out some of that content so sasha just to dive in i i want to speak to this topic of awakening because there's no bloody doubt about it we are going through a global awakening right now this is what i perceive to be the the state in which the collective consciousness has shifted from this very sleepy state of being very disconnected from their conscience, which is why something like the cabal or the deep state could even operate. People who are so deck, well, maybe not even people, you know, these energies that are so deeply connected from the interconnectedness of God and source energy that they could even do these kinds of things. So people are waking up, in my experience, from what I've witnessed in my own life, what tends to happen is there's a rather large cataclysmic event that really kind of wakes you up. I'm wondering if you had any kind of experience with this in which the turning point in your life went from being into music and performing as opposed to, okay, I need to follow my soul's blueprint, my soul's mission. What was that turning point for you that made you go, I need to dedicate the rest of my life to this? Uh, hi, Sarah. It's, it's, a, it's a complex question for me to answer because I'm invited to go into all sorts of um, kind of metaphysical and abstract um, narratives, which I don't particularly want to go into, but in, in, in the simplest terms, I'll try and distill it. Um, I, I went through a kind of shamanic journey uh, about 20 years ago, and that was something which was brought about by some pretty tragic circumstance in my own life which is of course the benefit and the beauty of having any kind of real tragedy in life, any kind of true, um, true departure from the comfort of, of the false reality that we inhabit. And when that happened, I embraced that shamanic journey fully. So that's the only thing I did in true, in true grace and courage was to not try and filter out uh, the experience for me that was the line in the sand and decided to move fully into that space and go into that shamanic journey, that death and rebirth, so to speak. And I think uh, all souls will find in that journey, the true shamanic journey, that you, um, you, you meet with your oversoul, you meet with your, uh, your imminent um, blueprint, so to speak. And once you've beheld that inner light or that inner countenance, um, nothing is ever the same again, nor should it be. Um, and you then begin reconstructing yourself, your relationship with yourself, which is to say your relationship with life. And you then uh, move into that um, divine format. You go into some kind of coherence with the divine flame. 
Um, this is an old, beautiful story. It's an archetypal story. Um, people are blessed when they can engage that journey in grace and in honor. Uh, I've been on that journey for about 20 years. So it's connected to prophecy because uh, in the shamanic state, one moves into uh, a deep um, uh, alignment with the primary narratives or storylines that underpin uh, the false light matrix. That's the point of the shamanic journey. It's a divination journey. And in going into that space, one dredges the subliminal depths of self. And then the greater self is in alignment with what's happening in the entire plane of Gaia. So you can, at that space, you can engage prophecy and you can begin to see um, timelines. You can begin to see where the zeitgeist is moving and you begin to move into a, a real coherence with that gestalt, that zeitgeist. So that journey for me was a fairly standard one, but it, it, was, it was enough to break the mold and reset the pattern. What I did was saw in the prophetic state that I was in 20 years ago, I saw 9-11, I saw um, the schism um, being architected uh, on the planet between the east and the west, the north and the south, um, the left and the right. Um, and I saw that the, the clash of civilizations was actually what was being engineered. That was a, a kind of planetary um, um, engineering, socio-cultural, uh, psycho-cultural, psycho-civilizational uh, engineering to break the back of humanity, to break the heart of humanity, break the soul. And it was connected to Islam versus Christianity and that whole kind of war against terror that came out of the 9-11 saga and that was what set the pattern for trauma for civilizational trauma and so with the falling of three massive steel buildings in 9-11 um, that was the casting of a spell a huge spell because it defied all reason defied all known physics and science and billions of people were invited by a, a saturnian luciferian media complex into believing the official narrative and then turning attention on terror, uh, terrorists, uh, Islamists, uh, wherever they may be hiding. And of course, we saw that play out for a few years and idiots amongst us believed that bullshit and those who aren't idiots uh, like myself didn't believe it for one instant. But you started to see how there was an invisible hand trying to create a schism in the civilizational program um, and pit us against one another as a species. Now that's been going on since time immemorial, the old divide and conquer um, uh, game, but it played out in an exceptionally vicious and evil way uh, with 9-11. That then frog marched us closely towards tyranny and towards um, people normalizing the idea that we should be afraid that there's a threat outside of us and it's coming to kill us and our babies. When all the while, the real terror was the thing that was pretending to protect and defend us, the thing called government. So where we've arrived at now, 20 years later from 9-11 or thereabouts, we've arrived at a point, a pivotal point in our um, civilization and our evolution, which is that good souls, the meek amongst us, people who are humbled within the flame of their own divine uh, counsel, are able to see quite clearly the insanity, the madness, um, the madness of departing from one's own reason, the madness in being invited by the status quo to depart from our own conscience and to no longer listen to our inner counsel. Now it's got even worse, of course, with this um, attempt at soft police state rollout where churches are closed, synagogues and mosques are closed, and humans are now being forbidden from gathering. Um, and congregating and practicing their faith. Well, that's a very, very dark trick because when you try and break the back of human humans and their faith, whatever their faith may be, you're now tipping out of the temporal 3D realm into the psycho-spiritual realm, and you're beginning to wage war on the fabric of human soul and the connection between humans and their, their divine. Their, whatever their divine story is. And that's what we're witnessing right now. So the, 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 the closing down of churches, synagogues, and mosques is a lot more evil than you might imagine. It's really an attempt to snap and break the back of humans. And the last recourse that most uneducated people or unenlightened people have with divinity is their faith. So I don't deride people having their pedestrian monotheistic religions. 
because most people who are still involved and uh, addicted to monotheistic religious uh, systems, they're still good people. And they're still um, trying to navigate through life in the best way that they can and maintain some kind of a connection with a spiritual or moral code. Now that that's being broken by the tyranny of governments who are operating under a complete false premise um, and are in treason against all living souls, uh, that's serious stuff. And that's really what we need to look at. But, but again, that simply raises the question, who are you and how do you define yourself and your own sovereignty and your own soul and your own journey in this matrix? Because you were not born to be a wage slave and you were not born to fill out your name in block black capital letters and do what some godless troglodyte in a municipal council office says you need to do. Uh, that's all an affront to the human soul. Every time uh, we get taxed unlawfully, all taxes are unlawful unless they're commercial taxes, uh, business taxes, which are fine. One should pay those in honor. But all personal income tax is eff effectively uh, the, the overreach of the crown or the state to begin to eat you alive, to literally eat the totem, which is money, tax, which represents your time and motion in this world, your energy, your life force. And if people step back from the idea of taxes and recognize that, that that's all it is, personal taxes, you offering up your soul for harvest, offering up your time and motion, your life force for harvest by the crown or the state, and then to look at what is the crown and the state, well, that's a fiction. It's a godless fiction. It's a diabolical fiction that is tiptoed in by stealth into the uh, proverbial matrix and now controls every aspect of our reality. It's telling us when we can move, when we can't move, when we can uh, speak, when we can't speak, what we do and what we don't do. That is about as diabolical as it can get. Anyone who understands the true majesty and the beauty of the Gospels, whether it's the Torah or the Quran or the, the, the Bible, uh, will know that these narratives have been forewarned. These are apocryphal stories which have sought to, to warn us in advance um, of what is now unfolding, which is Revelations 13, Revelations 13 and 14. For any Christians out there, go and read those again very, very closely. It talks about the beast of the sea uh, giving way now in 2020 to the beast of the earth. So we've been through, let's say, 2,000 years of admiralty and maritime commercial um, exchange where pirates, governments and pirates were taxing and fleecing and, and harvesting humanity illicitly through stealth, through taxing, through offering coin to Caesar and forcing us to do so or we would die. Up until now, where that whole game of, of corporate, imperial, commercial hegemony, economic hegemony, is now moving onto the earth. And the earth plane is where we inhabit. So the, the, the beast of the earth is now arising. And anyone who rolls their sleeve up for a vaccine or an RFID nanochip is absolutely inviting the beast to take control of their soul. Now, I'm not a religious man myself. I don't drink alcohol and I don't uh, take drugs. I never have done, believe it or not, despite appearances. I've never even taken a magic mushroom, much less smoked marijuana. That is the plain truth of the matter. I mean, I, I see things in a very, very sober context. So I'm not falling into some kind of um, spiritual hysteria here. I'm just sorry we, we dropped off there. Um, I'm assuming you're still recording, so I'll just carry on if I may. Can you hear me okay? Beast yeah. has now come on shore. It is no longer operating by stealth using maritime and admiralty law and piracy, the law of piracy, but it's now stepped onto dry shore. We must be very, very careful now. Each of us need to really see what's going on. Wearing a mask is a, a ritual humiliation exercise. It's a Babylonian ritual of humiliation, which is being afflicted, uh, which is afflicting billions of souls right now. To everyone who wears that mask in broad daylight, um, you are succumbing. You are the one who is permissioning the next move of the beast. It really comes down to that. I'm confident, Sarah, to speak in these terms because I know that I operate and speak from within what I call Christ of light which is the which is the 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 which is the soul covenant i know why i'm in this world 
uh, it's nothing special, but I certainly won't deviate from pure truth and right action. And that is special when you simply use that as your source code for engaging what's happening. I invite all people of the world to step into their flame right now and to recognize that there's still time to be able to ta tangle with these petty tyrants and petty bureaucrats and beat the living shit out of them in every way possible. You have to take the fight to them. You've got to start to engage your local petty tyrants, whether it's the post office. I've been saying it for years, but now it's more pressing than ever before. And also, as you know, my appeal is more to men than anything else. I know that's something which touches you very deeply, so I'll let you lead the next question. Uh, but it is really time now to step into the inner flame for each of us. There is no, there is no leader out there who's going to lead us out of it. We are all having to fight these individual battles on our own doorstep, and we must step into that fire. We must start to apprehend these goons in costume uh, who are hiding behind badges and seals of office for being exactly what they are, goons in costume. Now, a great many of them are good souls, and they know it themselves. We're seeing police turn. We're seeing court officers turn. We're seeing uh, old uh, bankers turn and uh, people from the corporate sector turning and recognizing that they themselves have pegged their soul to a covenant which is diabolical. So I'll leave it at that. I'm just to say the line in the sand has arrived on every one of our doorsteps. It is no longer something happening out there that the battle's going to happen out there and please God, you know, we can sign digital petitions and maybe we'll change the, the chemistry. No, don't make that mistake. This is your battle and my battle. The war is won. I've already said this. Homo sapiens are assured, but will you be amongst them? That becomes the question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, the thing is, I feel like people see the government as this brick wall that we, they're impenetrable. We cannot penetrate that. We can't do anything. I've gone down this rabbit hole with tax and realized that this is not the government. This is an organization. It is a corporation. As you say, what I love, a corporation corpse, something that is dead. It is not alive. It does not have soul essence within it. And that really is what tax is. And I feel that it won't shift until we all decide to opt out of this thing. But at the moment, people are still operating from this paradigm that the government is just it. You know, when you look at the hierarchy of power, the government is so far down that hierarchy. But that's not what we're fed. That's not how we're bred. We are taught that the government is incredibly powerful and whatever they say goes and you just have to pay anything they send to you. And that's that. So what do you say about it? Do you feel like we all just need to be opting out of this right yeah. now? Yeah, a, a government, I'll tell you what a government is. I'll keep it to three minutes. A government is a fiction. A government is a dead entity. It's worse than that. Governments are gangsters. They're mafia uh, that have succeeded, more or less. But they've all been connected through an entanglement into a super uh, national, transnational government, which we call the parent corporation. And its function is to sequester um, technologies and innovations which can heal and serve humanity. Its function is to perpetuate uh, enslavement through scarcity economics and blood economy. Its function is to consistently poison humanity and poison the earth through the agrochemical and pharmaceutical industries in order to maintain a harvest of humanity. And I'll get into that because that's a Babylonian occultist game and it's got some very, very serious consequence. Um, but it's about poisoning the earth and poisoning humanity in order to, again, control the flow of reality, in order to control um, a population and not allow for sentient, the sentient spark the spark of consciousness to actualize. And that's why, as you well know, fluoridating, fluoridating the water supply in cities all around the world since the Second World War was the prime objective. And that was rolled out really through the United Nations. And that was something that came out of the Nazi eugenics program. So fluoridating water calcifies the pineal gland. The pineal gland is, as we know, the gateway to our soul, the gateway to consciousness, and the gateway to, to, uh, to, gate, to, to any form of real expression. So when you, when, you, when you calcify the pineal gland with fluoride, and then you introduce glyphosates into the food supply, and then you rain down chemtrailing and geoengineering uh, with these other poisons, as I've mentioned multiple times in interviews in the last few weeks, the barium and the strontium and, 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 and so on, you've, got, you've created chemical compounds in the human body that are now all locking in together, and they're designed to have a diabolical effect, to weaponize every human being. 5G activates 
and that is the trigger by best account uh, to implode the bomb that we're all carrying, which is connected to chemistry, uh, which ultimately finds its way through those chemical reactions to the pineal gland, locks and loads, waits for the 5G uh, to activate, and then uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, it's already started to happen in some parts of the world in test bed uh, uh, scenarios. And we don't have time in this interview to get into the science of that. But the point is, humans have been weaponized biologically. And that is very, very serious stuff. The planet has already been uh, brought to the brink, not of extinction, but to the, it has been, it's been poisoned to such an extraordinary extent. Now, nature responds to that. There is an intelligence at work in nature that is far superior to any Babylonian uh, priesthood or to any um, of these uh, Sabbateans and their agendas, which have gone on for thousands of years. Nature has its own codes, its own way of dealing with threats, impending threats. It always deals with them, even if it's a thermonuclear Armageddon, which raises to the ground every living soul on the pl place of the Earth. Gaia is assured she'll simply breathe in again the next galactic cycle and life will issue forth. That's because life is everywhere. The coding of RNA and DNA is in everything all the same time. You can wipe out the 3D temporal hologram of our bodies and our forms, but you don't take away the imminent template, the cel celestial templates, which are encoded everywhere. We now know that even in advanced biological science. And I can give you an example of that if you want. The point is this. You, when you activate your spirit and your, your soul covenant and you move into alignment with your own divine flame and each one of us are born, that's our birthright. When we move into coherence with that, A, we become tapped into the universal mind. So we have access to a, 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 a body of wisdom, universal wisdom that is incredible. And you can barely stay awake in the daytime, at, at nighttime, because your mind is alive and this kundalini is, 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 is constantly moving through your body. And you are able to tap in. You know the answers to things because they're self evidence, self revealing, self reflecting. It's not that you've got to go to books or, or university to study any of these things, they are innate. That's the kind of psionic intelligence wisdom that each of us are craving at the soul level, which is why when we hear truth, we resonate to it. It's why we love going into, going into phase coherence with truths that we hear, deep truths. But the point is this, you don't need to follow anyone in order to get those truths or tap into them. You simply need to move into that inner sanctum, truly go into that inner space, breathe deeply and well, three to five minutes a day. You don't need to do more than that. But you really do need to start to attune to breath. Breath is the stuff that connects you into that. Maintain that inner stillness. Go into that phase conjugation or phase coherence with your inner flame. It is waiting to greet you. That is what we mean by becoming crowned on the throne of self. This is not a Luciferian construct. Luciferian construct is what the monotheistic religions have tried to teach us that self-learning is. We've been kept degraded. We've been kept maligned and kept in a, in a constant state of dystopia precisely in order to prevent us from moving into that kind of alignment. Now, that's the individual alignment. Imagine what happens when the collective moves into that same phase coherence or phase conjugation with the imminent divine template. Sweet Jesus, we transmute and transform everything in this world almost instantly. That's the pivot point where we find ourselves. As a species, we are absolutely already involved in this upgrade, this, this move into the spiral of Alcyon, which has been, a, which is a departure altogether from time and space as we understand it. Now, this time, 2020, in the Babylonian calendar, is desperately important because this is the time when all of that stuff comes into focus. And in that clear focus, we are able to see the black and the white, the checkerboard, with absolute clarity. There is no longer any fuzzy logic. None. You see what you see, you know what you know. People wearing masks on the streets in broad daylight are people who are choosing the covenant of unconsciousness, inaction, entropy, and death, ultimately, because that's what it brings about. Death and then space dust. Choose where you want to align your soul's trajectory, your soul's covenant, and your journey. It is our choice, but it really comes down to that, and we'll keep coming down to that.
Yeah, I love that. And I think it's important for everyone to realize this message because if we don't follow intentionally, follow the path of connecting with something deep inside of us that goes beyond this thing in here, then we will be led into what the rest of the world has been led into. And that agenda, it rightfully so looks as though they do want us to forget our divinity. They don't want us to connect with this power that is much bigger than the human mind and the human body. It's almost like just these, the intention is just have zombie sleepwalkers moving about the planet not free thinking for themselves so it leads me to my next question for you which is can, coming can, up Sarah Sarah sorry to do this but can I just interject there because it's so important what you've just said so so important but here's the trick here's the secret source if you want to escape that matrix and that cultural intoxication and that psycho spiritual death state if you really want to break out of it when you are pursuing what you've just said, you have to at the same time recognize that them, the them we're talking about, the them versus us, them is our teacher, our greatest teacher. We must salute them. All of that apocalyptic horror of the police state, the tyranny, the diabolical, the Gestapo, the, 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 all of the crimes that are being spat in our face by the state and the crown and by the petty bureaucrats and tyrants, they are our greatest teacher at this time. The secret in the source is to acknowledge that, to truly own that and say, I salute you, Yelda Baoth and all your minions, I salute you for bringing that horror, that apocalypse right to me here. Now I choose to allow the scales to fall. And I recognize that you, are only, have, you only have any traction in this universe due to the fact that I have permissioned you. And you are only made up of the surrendered aspect of my highest self that I have surrendered incarnatorily multiple times. Billions and billions of souls have surrendered their own life force into the field by not standing in the Christ of light, by not using that to embody and manifest heaven on earth. We are the ones who have surrendered that life force to the state, to the crown, to them. And they then emerge in the hologram and meet us squarely. It's perfect geometry. I must recognize that the creature I am addressing is the unresolved aspect of myself. Once I've recognized that in true, true, true inner logic, boom, I've just owned the game. That thing dissipates. It has no traction any further. The Christ of light emerges and you move forth and you cleave pure truth in this world and you're able to then manifest your noble expression. It's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. Yes, I love that. Thank you so much. And for the, all the people, I mean, this is just a relative question for a lot of beings right now with all of the polarization, the perspectives, you know, you're waking up, you're, you're speaking your truth and people are attacking you. What comes next? Do we even waste our life force on the beings? Is there some kind of soul contract in place that keeps people there and remained in their unconsciousness? Do we give our energy to informing that group of people or not? Yes, there is a perpetual dragnet and skynet um, that has been around this earth for thousands of years. Um, and we can go into the cosmogenesis stories and understand uh, galactic history and, and, and the genesis story of humankind and the, the fact that we are simply hybrids of uh, multifarious genetic strains coming in from different uh, states and different dimensions and different intelligences into this earth plane. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm not... I'm not quite sure what kind of answer will serve your, your network. Yes, there's a Skynet. Yes, there's a Dragnet. And yes, that Dragnet is consistently being reinforced. A 5G satellite, um, satellite communications was a cover story for putting military satellites into orbit. And that became a psychotronic um, Dragnet over the last few decades. Now, with activating the 5G spectrum, of frequencies um, is the most diabolical thing we could do because that is locking and loading and weaponizing that Skynet in a way that we, we could never have imagined possible. Um, other things have been going on in Earth in deep underground military bases and things even like the Superhadron Collider uh, finding the God particle 
in, in Europe, that the biggest scientific uh, multilateral scientific experiment on Earth, um, the, the cover story was that we're advancing physics. No, we don't spend hundreds of billions of dollars trying to advance physics, which we haven't even begun to understand the rudiments of anyway. Uh, no, that was all about getting taxpayers, i.e. human sacrificial lambs, to offer up their coin to Caesar in order to permission Caesar to begin to try to rip the fabric of time space and allow the unleashing of diabolical egregores into the 3D temporal earth plane. That's all the superhadron collider exercise was intended to do. And that has been uh, stopped in its tracks, uh, thankfully. But there have been multiple, uh, over, the, over the millennia, there have been multiple ways in which the dragnet has continu continuously sustained itself. The primary way that it's been sustained has been through blood sacrifice. So you talk about the engineering of wars, uh, especially in the last uh, 200 years or since the 1770s, and the, the French Revolution leading through to the Bolshevik Revolution, um, the Napoleonic Wars leading to the Bolshevik Revolution, and then the First World War, Second World War, uh, and then, of course, the Third World War right now, which is underway. Um, all of these are orchestrated, engineered pandemonium or engineered havoc designed to um, cause the bloodletting of hundreds of millions of souls um, by design in order to feed that egregore energy. So that's hyperdimensional physics, which I know a great deal more about that than I do temporal physics. But that's the truth of the matter is the blood harvest of humanity is what creates the, the fractal um, discord that moves in to lock and load us into the dystopia and in, uh, it sustains the galactic sleep cycles. When we awaken to the fact that we are the ones who are allowing ourselves to be harvested, we are the ones permissioning it and offering our kids up for um, to, to move into conscription, into armies and what have you. And the fact that we are paying coin to Caesar, who Caesar himself is, has got front people, heads of state, prime ministers and presidents, uh, ministers, um, uh, uh, chiefs of cabinet, parliamentarians, um, mayors, uh, councillors, all of these people are also servant class to the Babylonian priesthood. It's very important you understand that. So the invisible priesthood operates from behind that veil. And I can go into that. I won't do it here because it warrants about an hour and a half to two hours for me to walk you through that so you understand the science of how governments have been orchestrated, certainly since the uh, late 18th century. But it's, it is all dragnet. We are the ones permissioning it. Tax dollars are the thing, personal income tax. Again, I make a distinction. Pay business taxes, it's right and proper. Pay commercial taxes, that is right and proper. There is nothing lawful about paying personal income tax. That is gangsters at work. That is banditry. That is piracy. It is illegal, unlawful, immoral, unethical, and, and a diabolical affront to the spirit and the soul of humanity to pay your life force into the creature that is making determinations that doesn't consult you. So it wages war, it engineers wars, and Babylonian blood sacrifice, it never consults the people. And that's how governments have been designed, that's how parliamentary systems and the dialectic of so-called democracy has been designed. D democracy being the most vile, venal um, program that could ever have been uh, put into the, into the matrix. And yet we've fallen victim to it, believing that we have choice in the same way that women's lib was engineered by the Babylonian priesthood, uh, believing, letting women believe that they were emancipated. No, they weren't emancipated. That was just to get women away from the home and away from the children so that there could be two taxpayers in a household, the mother and the father, the kids would be taken by the state into schooling, into mind fuckery and dream spell at a young age and we were surrendering our babes up to the state. That's exactly what's happened. It's why we have hundreds of millions of young kids who are completely intoxicated. By the age of seven, they're already intoxicated and addicted to the most diabolical uh, technospheric uh, constructs. But that's, women's lib was introduced in the 60s and 70s as part of that game, that, that very, very clever dialectic playing out. Uh, we can talk about most of the uh, of the big primary nodes in history where we think, oh, that was where we found freedom. We were, you know, we finally stood up and claimed our freedom. No, all of those chapters were variously engineered, all of them. We are now a, a world at war, not just with each other. It's even worse than that. We're now at war with ourselves. We're at war with our own reason, with our own sanity. 
with our own conscience. That's where the war has been brought to. That's why I say it's a diabolical thing, but it's also a very beautiful thing because the geometry now is being brought to your doorstep. And you must recognize this, that you are being invited to make war against yourself when you were told to mask up and self-isolate and social distance. This is disgusting, evil Babylonian witchery. That's all it is. For humans to step us apart from each other and start to wage war against neighbors and start to snitch on each other, which is exactly what the diabolical police state wants. They want us to self-surveil and to dob in our neighbors, even family members. That stuff is happening already. This is, this is, uh, this is the most vicious attack against the fabric of humankind's soul that we're witnessing. And, and, and by all means, observe it for what it is but do not allow it to take place in the sanctity of your own soul covenant. That's my rally call. And my rally call again is connected more to men than to women right now. Yeah. And I have to say just before me and Sasha started filming, I was, I was really expressing the fact that there's been a huge amount of disappointment for me personally, witnessing so many beautiful men that I have met along the last five years of traveling the world. And I just don't see anyone using their voice. I just see so many people cowering away and I see the same thing again and again, Sasha. And it's this focus on, but we have to focus on light and love to manifest the highest timeline, which I can see so clearly because metabolizing the content about the children was like a, a blink of the eye for me. It really didn't stick with me because I've been down to the depths of my own darkness and I'm not fucking afraid of it. I'm not going to turn away from it. But so many beings on the planet right now just say, no, we can't look at that. We need to focus on light and love. So yes, disappointment in the men, of course, being aware that I'm not waiting for a man to stand up and, and use his voice because I can also do this. But I think that each and every one of us have to realize that now is the time in which we do use our voice. We get over all of those fears and traumas from past lives and whatever that we were, you know, um, killed at the stake through sharing our message. And instead, we just say, you know what, screw it. I'm going to share what feels real for me because this really feels like the true way in which there is going to be this global awakening and we are going to shift a timeline. And I don't see that happening through focusing on light and love. It's getting down and metabolizing and neutralizing these energies, knowing that our love is so powerful. You know, it's like last night I created a video about a vaccine and I went to bed feeling a little like my field was open. I was feeling a bit like, oh, I get into bed and I just breathe and I send my body so much love. And the whole room was just like white light. And it makes me realize how fucking powerful we all are but we are so asleep to that power and that power does not reside in focusing on rainbows and sunshine and focusing on the higher frequency timeline it's about getting down there and realizing that we are all of it and we are safe to metabolize all of it I, i'm not sure there was a question in there but I, I, all i can do is agree <laughs> with you uh, absolutely i would say that um i would say that in australia i've got some warrior brothers, Max Egan, Paul Sales, Neil Pascoe. Uh, there are some real warriors in Australia that I hope people are tuned to. But um, in the main, I, I'm pretty disgusted by, by, uh, by, by my brothers right now. I'm just not seeing any kind of real numbers amongst them uh, step up and, and own the space like, like fathers and brothers and defenders um, of families, defenders of women folk, defenders of babies and children, defenders of reason and sanity and conscience. Um, and, and to all of those pending warriors who are still sitting um, because they're still in a state of Stockholm syndrome or, or, or shock or trauma, get over your fucking trauma, brothers, get over it. It's just, it's a matter of spending one perfect moment in time looking in a mirror and recognizing that you were born to this world for a sacred, sacred reason. Your soul covenant is immensely powerful and majestic, but you must own it. Otherwise, you simply slip out of this incarnation back into another one and revisit the same uh, storylines. Don't make that mistake. This is the time. If ever there was a time, this is the time. And that's because we're on the, we're on the verge of timelessness. We're about to move beyond time beyond Babylonian calendric systems and 1260 interposed Vatican time signatures that completely desecrated our relationship between humans and nature, between our humans and the sun, moon, and stars, humans and the circadian rhythms that are natural and innate in everything, 
everywhere all the same time. We need to step away, recognize that I am the thing. I am the shit. I am the Atman. I will take this now out into consciousness and action because, and I think Sarah, that was your point. To be holding space is a beautiful thing. It's been an honorable thing up until this point. I can tell you here and now that holding spaces has almost no consequence any longer. This is an evolutionary thing. This is now about embodiment. This is now about enactment. This is now about manifestation. So consciousness in action is the only thing that matters. Otherwise, your consciousness is a, lo is a flickering flame in a, in a completely locked room. No one will see it. You're not sharing it with the divine. You're not sharing it with the, with the awakening. You must walk out in, in any way, shape, and form. The smallest action becomes, can, can change things, can change the lives of you and your families, but you must act. And I think that's the point you were making, uh, Sarah. Yes, yeah, definitely. And to round this up, that is really the question that I wanted to, to leave with. The most accessible and actionable things that each and every single one of us can be doing to tip the scales towards our favor. Obviously, there's a lot of the quantum leaping that's happening within the realms of our own consciousness of facing the uncomfortable and just being with whatever is arising, but there has to be outward actions as well. So you've already given a lot that a lot of people can take from, but if there's anything else that you can share in terms of things we can put into action now. Uh, the, the, the pedestrian actions, um, I'm not expert at them, believe it or not, people think I am because of the, the New Earth templates, which uh, I've been speaking to for many years, and, and not least because of the work of the International Tribunal for Natural Justice, and that was setting up a real interface, uh, which is having some real impact right now, and what we're doing in the next few weeks is so exciting. But um, it, 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 there's, there are different rules and regulations and provisions and codes in every neighborhood and every village and town and city around the world. So it's very difficult for me to give any generic um, solutions uh, to, to this problem. But in simplest terms, uh, what you can do is you can, A, interface with the local police and interface with the local authority in the full recognition, rec recognition of course, that they are in treason anyway against you, the, the people, the living men and women of the soil are always the true sovereign. We are the ones who mandate it governments. It's a social contract, um, which we're never taught about in school, but actually governments are only there because of the social contract. That's why we register and, and tabulate things. But the governments have emerged and grown into these constructs that have become self, um, uh, that they're standing in their own space and they recognize only that you will do what you're told or you will be bludgeoned, beaten uh, or tasered and ultimately murdered because that's what governments do. They ultimately um, sanctify and sanction uh, early death syndrome, meaning to say cancers, things that we get because of the poisons in the air, the, the, the water and the, and the soil. So that's governments sanctioning um, early death syndrome. Mm. So no one should be dying before the age of 200 in this world at this time if our autoimmune systems were fully amped up, if we were living in a planet which had detoxified and if we were able to uh, pursue the ecstatic waveforms of our bliss, of our orgasm, and fully take that into manifestation, uh, we would be extending life limitlessly. We know that. We know enough about microbiology right now and what's happening in the microbiome to know that we have the propensity to live to 200 years of age without blinking. Not a, not, not a problem. And for sure, our generation will see that. I mean, I may say this absolutely categorically. We've already tipped into that space now. Uh, once we get through this particular um, ugly tunnel uh, that's been foisted on us by the death rattle of the behemoth, we will be seeing a world certainly between now and 2030, we'll be seeing the uh, immortal uh, technologies will become mainstream, uh, the anti-gravitational technologies and the over-unity um, energy systems will all become very uh, mainstream and, and suburban. There's no question about that. All governments will move into dissolution on the back end of this particular chapter because this chapter is the greatest salutation, the greatest lesson or apprehension uh, to our, our, our collective soul. And we will rise and we will recognize that we have permissioned that. We will depermission it. We'll deconstruct it. It'll move into deconstruction. That's written into the program already. 
10 years from now, we won't even be talking in terms of 2030. I believe we'll transcend the Babylonian calendar altogether because mm -hmm. we will recognize that that has been witchery as well. That was witchcraft. And we will move beyond 1260 and, and the calendric system altogether. But let's say in 10, 10 linear years from now, we will absolutely be in a world which is back into phase coherence with natural coding, with the coding from the dielectrical universe and the paramagnetic earth. They'll be meeting perfectly in the human sphere and the morphogenesis of humanity will be able to plasma project and manifest and anchor patterns of perfection in this realm that we've never been able to ever, ever. Well, possibly in uh, um, uh, Lemurian times, we were almost at that, uh, at that point. We're more special now than even at the time of Mu. There's even more encodement in us to be able to anchor patterns of perfection than at that time. So that's the journey we've got coming. There's no question about that. There will be no governments or corporations in 10 years' time. They will have been decommissioned and deconstructed from the matrix. Um, but it's, again, all down to the degree to which each of us choose to surf now this journey and to the degree to which we can own right action and pure truth and noble expression. Meaning to say, the next few months and years will either be an ecstatic, blissful journey, even walking through the smoke screen of the apocalypse, or it'll be a diabolical one where we are completely infused with fear and constriction and obedience. That's a choice. You can choose to navigate. And when the, the, the apocryphal stories about the meek inheriting the earth, that's exactly what it speaks to. The meek are those who have humbled themselves sufficiently to have moved into the inner sanctity of the throne of self, made friends with who you be, who you are in this realm, recognize the majesty of your soul, put that into coherence with the divine flame, and then move out into this world in a state of bodhisattva, where you are really actioning service to others over service to self, but in the clear knowledge that service to others is the highest service to self. That's the beauty of it. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, to uh, that's all my questions, but I hear you say this saying a lot and I really want you to, it's very activating for me without even knowing exactly what you mean by this, but you speak to the living men and women of the soil. Would you mind just giving like a brief description of what you mean by this? Sure, I'll try and keep it brief. Um, I not. say the li living men and <laughs> I say living men and women of the living soil because the soil is alive because there is spirit and soul even in silica, in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the geometry of the atoms and the molecules and the cells that make up everything that we can see and touch and feel and smell and behold. Um, everything is infused with Atman, with, uh, with life force, with prana, with chi. When we recognize that we are not um, trapped inside a body and we are supreme and that we must master nature, we must master the animal kingdom, we must master space. That's hubris, that's, that's, that's horrendous self-inflicted suicidal reasoning, uh, which only ever gets us a whole lot of pain, a whole lot of sorrow. When you've incarnated enough times to recognize that, you step back into a space of humility. And once you've befriended yourself, you recognize that there is no need to be squawking you don't need to protect or defend yourself from anything or anyone. The only thing that is worthy of protection is pure truth. So you, you move forth in life and you conduct right action and you speak to pu the pure truth of things. And that's the navigation tool that you need, all of us. We don't need gospels. We don't need doctrines. We don't need governments. We don't need systems. We don't need anything to organize reality the reality hologram for us all we need is to navigate using that pure truth and right action now living men and women of the living soil are the truest um, exemplars of that people who keep connected to the earth plane and register and recognize the power and the majesty of the forces of the telluric planes the inner earth the crystalline core of the earth the inner vacuum of the inner space of the inner earth, and then the telluric realms of the crust of the earth coming up and giving birth to all forms that spring off the surface of the earth, the highest form evolutionarily, of course, being the human technology, the biotechnology. So each of us are inhabiting one of these amazing bioforms, and we're lucky to have done so. 
but recognize that the connection is between the paramagnetic forces of the Earth moving through us and the dielectric forces of the universe also conjugating and meeting the Earth plane. So the human being, as I've said for many, many years, is the living kiss between the heavens and the Earth. Forget the hell. The hell doesn't exist. That's only in the mind. That's the fourth dimensional uh, playground that we like to try and define our divinity against the blackness of uh, of that, but that's only taking place in the mindscape. There is no hell. There never was a hell. There is no uh, behemoth and leviathan in truth. There is no Yaldabaoth. There is no egregore in true terms. All of that is the surrendered, abnegated life force that we have unwittingly in our evolution permissioned into the field. And it's locked and it's meeting us now in perfect geometry. We need to see it, uh, apprehend it, salute it, and then release it. And then we can transmute it and we can transcend it. Simple as. Mm. Wow. But that, that's, the, that's the gift of the living men and women of the living soil because we have to recognize the fact that we are, the, in the sense, the, the sons and daughters of God. We are divine emissaries in this world. And that's what I mean by li living men and women of the living soil. We are not fictions. We're not the trust or the birth certificate or the deeds or the bonds that we're indentured to. Uh, in this uh, fictitious realm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and aside from the birth certificate and the us just being sold off in this way, it's like the obsession with form, the obsession with believing, you know, uh, coming through these five senses and believing that this is all there is and really the importance of just putting a bloody blindfold on if you have to, but going inside and realizing yourself as something more than this form alone. And that alone is going to prevent this fragility of thinking that you are this weak, vulnerable human that is subject to death at any moment and when you overcome that fear or at least start to step closer to overcoming that fear you do become free because you realize that you are an eternal being and that this form is not what you are just a meat sack that you're temporarily living in and that alone i feel is really going to support people's levels of fear no question about that and uh, the the trick about death is to recognize and again if anyone undertakes the shamanic death and rebirth fully you learn this you learn that death only happens when you permission it and that there is no force in this universe that can bring about your death now there can be soul covenants there can be a soul covenant and what you would do, what you would call karma or karmic entanglement which can offer you death but you can override even that we have the power to override a death program if it's a soul covenant connected to karma. But it does mean that we have to actualize before that event horizon occurs. We have to go into true coherence with the divine, be able to see that that death, that death event is written into this particular entanglement. And then one is able to perform alchemy, um, which is past future alchemy. But you're able to perform that alchemy and absolve the entanglements or the knots or the karmic debts that have brought you to that event horizon. So before you actually meet that event horizon, your state of timelessness has already preempted that and you have mended uh, whatever needed mending before the, before the, the death covenant was enacted. And so we're, we've now entered into that extraordinary hyperdimensional um, uh, uh, vector where we are able to even um, uh, apprehend our own um, karmic debts that lie ahead of us, provided we're in coherence with the divine and we're able to see, because in that state of coherence, it's well known to everyone who's in a state of samadhi or a state of uh, atman in, in alignment with highest self. It is, we, we see in the past, we see the future, we see that they're all entangled in the now. So in the perfect moment of, of the bliss uh, state, internally one is able to divine and enter the and engage the divinations of future and of past and i say it's future past because in order to apprehend a future karmic debt you are actually invariably required to go back and mend the past entanglement to absolve it to forgive it so this brings us to the true answer to your earlier question which is uh inviting me to speak about the true quanta of the living men and women of the living soil so I tell you what it is. It is the fact that the human technology, once it is actualized as a living man or woman of the living soil, as a true son or daughter of God, you become the point of absolution in the universe for all else. And you, that's the Christed light 
It's moving forth and waging war, but forgiving and absolving your enemy at all times. So the empathy wave moves in front of you. You're absolving into the love form, the diabolical. You're not waging war against it and trying to do battle. Very brave crusaders and warriors have done that for thousands of years. It didn't serve them too well, but they're very brave nonetheless. The, the alchemy is to move the empathic wave form and the absolution form ahead of your fire, ahead of your warrior fire. And then you're able to pull that into this absolution that disarms the egregore. It disarms the diabolical and the action does not hit you. It cannot because it doesn't have any permission and you're the one granting permission, but only in that still point within the actualized flame, are you able to invoke that particular form of protection? Very simple, but that's the power, the glory and the majesty of homo sapiens sapiens.